Hi, Caleb with Brownells here, and as you can see today, I am not in the Brownells studio. That's because I'm at Rock Island Auctions checking out some other cool guns that are going to be in their upcoming auction. And here in front of me today, I have the Lindner Silver War Carbine. So, like I said, it's a Silver War Carbine, which means it was made in the early 1860s, and this gun has a pretty interesting story behind it. So, this is a gun that shoots a 58 caliber paper cartridge using the Lindner system here that they also use to convert a lot of muskets over. And the way this actually works, I'll show you how it works and I'll kind of get to the story behind it here, is that this will actually come up and then you can load it. So what you would do here, well, you would start with the hammer down, you would come to the half cock position, and then on the opposite side here, you have this knob and what you would do is simply push it over and it's going to rotate and unlock. When it unlocks the breech is going to tip up then you would put your contained paper cartridge in there, close it and rotate this tab back over. Now whenever I do this you can see here that this lug pulls on the one on the breech and it's going to pull it forward and create that gas seal. Then you would just put on your cap, go to full cock, and you were ready to fire. So a pretty cool design, and it was a revolutionary design until it wasn't, because this was coming out right about the time the uh, metallic cartridges were coming out. So this was obsolete pretty quick. So about, or just under 900 of these were delivered um, to the United States government, and whenever that happened, they were in contract to deliver more. But since it was obsolete, since it was rendered obsolete so quickly, um, they were taking this action and they were going to do some improvements on it. Well, by the time the improvements were done, it was completely obsolete. The U.S. government didn't want any more. So, what they did to get out of the contract was, they basically just never sent an inspector to inspect the firearms, so that they failed the inspection, um, and that's kind of a pretty shady way for them to get out of the contract, but that's what they did. So then some lawsuits filed um, soon after, and after some legal battles, Lidner actually lost the legal battles, and so the U.S. government got out of the contract, but they ended up selling all the excesses over in Europe. Uh, so they still got their money back on them, but kind of a weird situation there, even though they still use this system to convert a bunch of previous muskets before. So to better understand this system and you know kind of where it came from, let's talk about the technology of the time. So you have your musket. Now, with your muskets, you're loading it from the muzzle. You're, you're pouring in your powder, your patch, um, ramming your ball in, getting it all packed in, and then you're putting on your cap and then firing it, which was a pretty long process. This process was much shorter. Um, but before I talk about this one, I'm going to jump forward to the metallic cartridges like we have today it's all contained in that metallic cartridge. You have your case, you have your projectile, you have your powder and your primer, and it's all, for the most part, watertight. Um, so that's your metallic cartridge. And then this fits a, in a small time frame in between those two. You have your breech loading paper cartridge, which is exactly what it sounds like. You have your powder, your projectile, and that is contained in uh, uh, basically a roll of paper that you stuffed into this breech here and then closed, and then you put on your cap, which would take the place of your primer in your metallic cartridge here, and fired it. It was, and that was much faster than loading the musket, uh, because you, you basically cut down all the steps you need to do in order to get this thing ready to fire. Um, obviously, it's not nearly as fast as your metallic cartridge, but way more convenient, even though you still had to worry about keeping everything dry, uh, because once that paper got wet, that was an issue. Uh, as with, you know, just getting your powder wet with your muskets. As always, we'd like to thank Rock Island Auctions for having us out here to get to handle and do videos on all these awesome firearms. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and make sure you join us next time when we bring you another gun from the vault.